Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, this is your double upload, your second video of the day, earlier on I gave you guys my reaction to the Champions League quarterfinal draw where Real Madrid did get Chelsea, unfortunately, <laughs> but... Also, the reaction to the others, including the Europa League draw and how I'm seeing it between Real Madrid and Chelsea, all considered uh, factors that you have to take into consideration going into that game. So make sure you check that out. I will leave a link for you right here to check out after you are done with this. Let's get cracking into the second video of the day, which is Chelsea versus Everton and the match preview to it before we get cracking make sure you follow on twitter and instagram links are in the description as well as that the second channel which is having a relaunch and brand new content is on its way there i'm going to keep telling you guys that that's what's happening and then the first video back on that channel will be uploaded very very soon so make sure you're there and you're ready for it let's get cracking chelsea's versus Everton, I was going to say, I was going to say, I just saw the latest score between Nottingham Forest and Newcastle and I was going to say Nottingham Forest. <laughs> My mind's gone all over the place. But Chelsea versus Everton. Chelsea currently sitting in 10th and Everton currently sitting in 15th. Uh, it's, uh, you know, you some would argue it's a traditional Premier League mid-table clash. <laughs> but, but all things considered, this, this game doesn't hold much meaning for Chelsea. It does for Everton because Everton are on the brink of a relegation battle and right now they are only one point away from uh, the drop zone. So um, it's looking, looking quite dire. Not just for Everton, but all the teams are in that in that zone. We have Bournemouth currently sitting on 24 points. Um, West Ham, Leicester all sitting on 24, Everton on 25, Wolves on 27, Crystal Palace on 27, Nottingham Forest on 29. It's, you know, there's there's that. And then Aston Villa are a bit far ahead, six points away. So those teams are all thinking, we don't want to get relegated, right? Everton right now with Sean Dyche are not an easy team. And with Chelsea's form, now Chelsea in 10th, let's look at Chelsea, right? We are 37 points, having played one game less than Fulham, we are two points behind Fulham, so we can leapfrog Fulham into 9th, that would be nice. Um, Brentford have the same amount of games as us, sitting four points ahead on 41. And then there's Brighton, 42, Liverpool, 42, Newcastle, 44. Right, So you could argue that there is a chance to get near to Newcastle that have played the same amount of games as us, but we're going to need to have mad, mad, mad form, ridiculous form, win, 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 win. We need to because the rest are going to win games, right? They're not going to drop points every single week. That's just not going to happen. So you have to not only rely on yourself, but you have to rely on others dropping as well. So you can't ask for the world. Chelsea just have to do their best. I say it's unrealistic to think of even like trying to get top four. It's not going to happen. But if we end up in a Europa League spot, you can't ask for more than that. Right now, all considered factors here, you know, taking things into consideration, all the circumstances that we've been in, you can't ask for more. So Chelsea looking at this thinking, yeah, you know what, if we beat Everton, we can keep this going. For me right now, it's to prove to ourselves that we can and we have turned the corner. I'm not really looking at European spots or, you know, let's try and get Europa League. I couldn't care less, right? If, if we're trying to actually get European football, let's try and win the Champions League and go down that route. Because do I want us to play Europa League next year? No. Do I want to play Conference League? No. Again, unless we've got a strategy in place and we just give it to the kids, you know? Show me how good you are. Here's a European competition for you. Like, that's it. That's the only time I'd consider the, 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 the Conference League because I think it'd be good experience for them. Apart from that, though, I'd rather finish eighth. <laughs> I really would. And just go in for the title next season. Let's see what we can do. Um, but this game against Everton is a, is a game to try and see. Not not for the players. This is for us. We want to know. Have, has, have Chelsea genuinely turned the corner? We've had three good results. And each one has been progressively, pro progressively better than the previous, right? We've got to keep that going. And I could argue... That this game against Everton tomorrow, so this is going to sound weird, but it's going to be the toughest of the games that we've had that we've won. We beat Leeds. We beat Dortmund. We beat Leicester. But tomorrow is going to be the hardest, taking all the circumstances into factor compared to those. Why? Because our kryptonite... We haven't really had in those games against Leeds or against uh, Dortmund or against Leicester. Leeds, we were all a little bit 
on the brink. Why? Because, well, not a little bit. We were a lot on the brink because confidence was low. We were looking at every game going, yep, we're going to lose. And then we'd lose. Yep, we're going to lose. And then we'd lose. Yep, we're going to lose. And then we'd lose. Like, it, we just went on a ridiculous losing streak, right? To the point where we lost all belief in ourselves. Even as fans, we're looking at, yeah, we're going to get battered. You know? Southampton, yeah, we might lose to them. And then, lo and behold, we do. Tottenham, yeah, we're going to lose. There's no, there's no point showing up. We're going to lose. What happens? We lose. You know? The Leeds game was a game where we looked at it and went, yeah, we might lose. And then we didn't. We did play better. And Leeds were not clinical. And Leeds did have chances. And Leeds weren't just defending and defending. They were trying to be using... You know, trying to use their advantage of, of their physicality and trying to take control, especially in midfield, try and take the ball high up the pitch and launch a quick attack to try and catch us off guard. And they did a couple of times. They just couldn't finish at all, right? They had chances. They just couldn't finish. That's where they let themselves down. But we got the result. And then Dortmund. Dortmund, you could say didn't have the resources to control the game. They tried to, but they didn't, right? Um, albeit, we actually played well. We actually played well, and we took advantage, and we were clinical. Leicester, Leicester, I think, from from, from the get-go, we had their number. And until after we, we scored, they got a goal back, and you're thinking, you know, but our response was fantastic. We, we could have, well, they could have, they could have got something from that game if they had kept up their momentum after they'd scored the goal, but they didn't. We found a way back, and that's not something that we've done very frequently. But you could see in each of those games, the opponent were actually giving a go and using space and trying to come at us. Our kryptonite, what we struggle against is a low block physical team. We struggle. We always have. We can't get through. And when we can't get through, we're blank. <laughs> we're blank. It's a test tomorrow because that's exactly what Sean Dyche's Everton are going to be like. You best believe, and they beat Arsenal that way, you best believe Everton, backs against the wall, lads, we're going to suffocate them. Yeah? Take all the hits and stay standing. That's going to be Sean Dyson's instruction. They got a nice defensive tactic in place. We know about the V. <laughs> you know, um, there, there's going to be all sorts of, of obstacles in place for us. We're going to have all the ball. But are we going to do anything with it? That does come down to us to an extent because the one thing against Leicester that I liked and that's going to uh, hopefully we transfer into the Everton game is the, the amount of the speed that we moved the ball in how direct we were, how fast our transition was. We're able to do that against Everton. We might exploit even tight spaces and catch them off guard when we do take the ball off them if they do have the ball and they're trying to move the ball up the pitch. If we can snap it off them and hit them very quickly and very direct, we might catch them off guard and we might get a goal that way. But if you're trying to ask us to score against Everton that are just going to be like this... Go on then, <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> you ain't getting through. You're going to find back five, right? And then the midfield four right in front and then one man. Five, four, one, instantly. You just know, four, four, two, add an additional man, five, four, one, done, right? Lock it up. That's what Everton are going to show up with. I genuinely think so. Especially us playing with a front three. Those three, mid those three defenders in, in, in a back five are going to occupy each man, man for man. And the others are going to make sure that Reese James and Chilwell are not going to cause any havoc on the wing. If they come inside, then boom. That midfield four is going to lock everything up. They are going to try and suffocate us tomorrow. And that's our kryptonite. We struggle against that sort of team. We struggle. Not on the ball. We just, we can't score. We can't create a chance that way. We get dispossessed and then the ball comes back to defence Then we have another go and then we get dispossessed and then we have another go and nothing happens. So it depends on how quick we are, how, how, how fast we are moving for each other, what spaces we get into and how quickly can teammates ex exploit and read other teammates in order to get the ball into certain spaces. That way we can catch them off guard in a split second. That's going to be the only way. Unless if Everton actually have a go, which I don't expect. If they do have a go, then that opens things up for us. But I don't expect them to. You know what Sean Dyche's teams are going to set up like. So this is where I'm saying tomorrow's going to be our toughest game that we've had compared to the other three. It's going to be our toughest. And let's see if we do pick up a win tomorrow... 
I will have to start saying, you know what? I think we've turned the corner. I think we have. So let's wait and see what happens tomorrow. Now, talking about the team news, uh, positive team news, albeit there are a couple of ne negatives. So Raheem Sterling is going to be out, who's got a hamstring issue. Apparently it's minor, but he's not being risked. Um, Mason Mount is out because of his pubic bone. Um, and therefore, he's even withdrawing from um, the, the England squad because of it, despite him getting called up earlier today, which was weird in itself. But there's that. Um, and in terms of N'Golo Kante, he's going to be, it's looking like, available on the bench. He's back in the squad. Lo and behold, N'Golo has returned, right? After this long, I think it's going to be his first game for Graham Potter if he does if he does play. So we'll wait and see what happens there. Um, Reese James is back from illness, so he's definitely going to be playing. Thiago Silva is still out. Um, Aspi still out as well. And apart from that, everyone is available. For Everton, Calvert-Lewin um, is still apparently still got a hamstring issue and is looking unlikely to play. Um, and Andros Townsend is obviously still a long-term or absentee so he won't feature apart from that they've got everyone available so it's going to be an interesting setup it's going to be an interesting game it's going to be an interesting one to see how how it's all going to play out but talking about the starting 11 how should we show up let's get right into it now this is my starting 11 so starting in goal, we are going to go Kepa for sure because he's our only choice. And he's been playing well except for the last one. Um, he was looking a little shaky. I don't want to see old school Kepa again, Kepa. Don't do that. <laughs> You've been good up until now. Don't blow it. Um, but honestly, no. Overall, Kepa's been very reliable. So fair play to him. The back three, we have to stay in the back three. I don't care what anyone says. For the rest of the season, um, we have to stay with what is working, right? As far as I'm concerned, I just wouldn't change the lineup. But all, all things considered, we have to we have to change a couple of things. So Fafana, uh, Kukurea, and Kulebali as the back three. Some would say play Badia Shile. I wouldn't be against it. But... I Kukurea deserves to play. Uh, his last two performances have been stellar. Man of the match, and then yet last last week against Leicester, he was brilliant. So keep it up. You can't change that. If, if if someone's in that sort of form, you keep it going for the benefit of the team. It's not against Badiashile. If we do go with Badiashile, I can understand. Now, considering that we are not coming to the end of March just yet, we've got an international break, what I would do is play Kukurea. And then in April... Because of the Champions League, we've got nine games in April. Kukure is not going to play every single game from there. Not going to happen. We're going to have to rotate. And you have to consider Badia Shile is not in the Champions League squad, which is actually quite insane now when you think about it. But Kukure will be playing the Champions League games. There's going to be rotation. There has to be rotation. Nine games in a month is ridiculous. So there's going to be players shifting. There has to be. Um, so when you do look at it that way, Badia Shile will play. Um, so for tomorrow, Kukure keeps up his form. Um, in the wingback role, Reese James comes back. Welcome back after illness. And Ben Chilwell keeps his spot after scoring a wonder goal against Leicester. He stays in the left wingback position. We go to the midfield. Kante is going to be available, it seems, but he's not going to start. So we have to go Enzo and Kovacic to start for tomorrow. And then we'll see later on if we do bring on Kante. I have to be honest. If Kante does play, he's probably playing 10 minutes max. I don't feel like he's going to come on even. I, I don't expect him to come on. He might be in the squad, but I don't think he'll be played. Um, that's my personal opinion. We'll wait and see. If he does show up, I'll be very happy though. Um, so for, for me, we start with those. It worked against Leicester. We keep it going. And as I've said, we're going to be keeping the ball tomorrow. So I don't think it's a case of having to worry too hard about defending. It's going to be about ball playing. So Kovacic and Enzo, I feel like will be will be fair enough. And the front three... We keep the front three as it was. Mudrik, Felix, and Kai Havertz. Uh, Kai Havertz is in a purple patch. He's playing really well. He's getting goals. Happy days. Keep it up. Um, Mudrik, look, he got an assist. Hopefully tomorrow he can get a goal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be, it's not going to be, uh, you know, we were 006 and, and then we've gone to 016. Hopefully tomorrow will be 116. Yeah, how about that? We just start building up the goals and the assist stats. So Mudrik on the left hand side for me starts um, and hopefully he can cause some sort of havoc. Felix on the right for sure. Same, um, same difference you could say to Mudrik in terms of. Just trying to... And you know what? Felix has actually been really, really good. It's just very unfortunate. He keeps hitting the woodwork. He needs to not hit the woodwork and hopefully he'll score. 
And Kai Havertz is getting goals now. Or he at least he's he's building upon how he was playing and he's doing well. So hopefully we keep that up. I feel like that's the 11 we have to go with. It's basically the 11 that played against Leicester. All considering that Reese James is back in the team. Um, and uh, the rest are the same. If I'm not mistaken, the rest are the same. Don't change the winning team. So for me, that would be my starting 11. Let me know down below if you agree or disagree. Um, I feel like that's the best that we can go with right now. And I feel like it's it's just you have to build momentum now. We're not looking about trying to play the best football. We need results. This worked last week. We're picking up momentum, it seems. Hopefully, we do the same tomorrow. Keep the same team. Simple as that. Or close to it. You could say it's it's not fair on Loftus-Cheek that he doesn't play tomorrow, c considering he did play a part in the Leicester game. It's Reese James. He has to play. <laughs> it's Reese James. So, there's that. Um, but overall, I have to say I'm confident. I'm confident. Um, I do feel like we have turned, turned, turned some sort of corner. I can't ignore that, you know, based on the poor form that we were on, that all of a sudden that's just going to come back. I feel like we've been doing well um, and we're seeing bits of progress and we're improving slowly but surely. So tomorrow, I've got a feeling that we will get past this low block. We will take at least one or two chances and we'll score. I reckon, I don't think Everton will score. So I'm going I'm going for the dreaded scoreline, which I know some of you don't like, but I have to be honest here. And you know what? Look, 1-0 I would take, but I do think it's going to finish 2-0. I'm going Chelsea 2, Everton 0. And we do get four out of four. And maybe we've turned the corner. And then we look forward to the remaining games after the international break and into April, Real Madrid and the craziness that's going to happen. So let's wait and see. Let me know your score prediction, your lineups and everything that you want to say down below in the comment section below. Much appreciated. Don't forget to check out my reaction to the Champions League. Draw card is already up here. So make sure you um, have a look at that now you are done with this if you haven't already. And I will see you tomorrow after the game is all said and done and we pick up three points against Everton and hopefully we climb up that table a little bit more. Just a little bit more, bit by bit, we will find ourselves in a decent position of form and um, back to being Chelsea. Let's let's do that. Yeah, can we can we bring Chelsea back to where Chelsea should be? That would be nice. So I'll see all of you tomorrow after it's all said and done. Again, let me know your thoughts and your predictions down below. Much appreciated. How do you genuinely think we're going to play? Let me know, and I will see all of you then. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this, and I will see all of you tomorrow, people. Have a good one. Have a good one. See you tomorrow. Take care, and peace.